The 2012 attack on the U.S. consulate and CIA compound in Benghazi, Libya, has sparked a firestorm of recrimination and accusation touching on policy and politics. As former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton prepares to testify before a congressional committee about the attacks tomorrow, Chief Foreign Affairs Correspondent Margaret Warner catches us up on the facts of the case. This fiery scene at the U.S. consulate in Benghazi, Libya, took place three years ago, but it sparked a political war of words that's still being fought. Thirteen months after the fall of dictator Muammar Gaddafi, Benghazi was lawless and awash with guns. The U.S. mission was protected by one local militia and unarmed contractor guards. On the anniversary of 9-11, around 9.40 p.m., heavily armed men stormed the compound, opening fire and torching some of the buildings. Hours later, a CIA annex less than a mile away came under mortar attack. U.S. Ambassador Christopher Stevens died in the main compound, along with Foreign Service Officer Sean Smith, apparently of smoke inhalation. Two contractors, ex-Navy SEALs Tyrone Woods and Glenn Doherty, died at the annex. Then Defense Secretary Leon Panetta said U.S. commanders had no intelligence that an attack was coming on the Benghazi mission, and U.S. forces were too far away to help when it did. Frankly, without an adequate warning, there was not enough time, given the speed of the attack, for armed military assets to respond. In the aftermath, the military did deploy elite teams of U.S. Marines from Rota, Spain, one to Benghazi to evacuate personnel, the other to fortify the U.S. Embassy in Tripoli. The Benghazi assault came after anti-U.S. protests that day in a half dozen Islamic countries. In Cairo, a mob breached the walls of the heavily fortified U.S. Embassy, tearing down the U.S. flag. No Americans were harmed. All those protests were against an American citizen's online movie mocking the Prophet Muhammad. Five days later, on the Sunday talk shows, then U.N. Ambassador Susan Rice pointed to a linkage. What this began as was a spontaneous, not a premeditated, uh, response to what had transpired in Cairo. But Republicans charged the White House knew almost immediately Benghazi was a terror attack and concealed it to protect President Obama's re-election campaign. The administration insisted Ambassador Rice was speaking from the best information available at the time. Four months later, then-Secretary of State Hillary Clinton took on Senate Republicans at a hearing. The fact is, we had four dead Americans. Was it I because understand. of a protest, or was it because of guys out for a walk one night who decided they'd go kill some Americans? What difference at this point does it make? It is our job to figure out what happened and do everything we can to prevent it from ever happening again. The incident launched parallel investigations by the FBI, the State Department, and Congress to do just that. One was by an independent accountability review board appointed by Secretary Clinton and headed by retired former Ambassador Thomas Pickering. That December, it issued a stinging report on what happened that night, and it called the consulate's security posture inadequate for Benghazi and grossly inadequate to deal with the attack. It was deficient in uh, security supplies. It was probably deficient in the security manning of the post. Uh, there were ongoing security problems in Benghazi, which we felt should have alerted the department uh, to deal with those issues. Uh, many of the questions presented to the department were answered in the negative when they probably should have been uh, positively responded to. And are you saying there were requests for additional security there and they were denied? There was an ongoing request for additional security, and a number of them were not, were, were not responded to properly and, and positively, yes. The Pickering Review cited, quote, systemic failures and leadership and management deficiencies at the State Department, a consulate that was severely under-resourced with regard to certain needed security equipment, and a short-term staff rotation that resulted in diminished institutional knowledge, continuity, and mission capacity. Pickering said the review board closely examined whether the U.S. military could have scrambled forces elsewhere to the attack site. And it was very clear to us that the nearest assistance was called upon right away, but the requirement to mobilize aircraft and move those uh, Marines in Spain uh, was not sufficient to get it there in time. Three State Department officials resigned immediately after the report. The report did not fault Secretary Clinton. 
did you try to follow the chain of command, as it were, the chain of responsibility all the way to the top? Absolutely. So it just, did it go, ever go to the Secretary of State? I have no indication that any of these decisions went to the Secretary of State. And do these decisions usually go to the Secretary no, of State? No, they would not normally go to the Secretary of State. These were decisions about uh, should we provide X kind of money to build a wall? Meanwhile, a man charged as a ringleader of the Benghazi attacks, Ahmed Abu Katala, faces a federal trial in Washington after being captured by U.S. Special Forces last year. I'm Margaret Warner for the PBS NewsHour in Washington.